In this video, we'll be proving the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, we'll be proving the first part. Uh, we'll prove the second part in our next video. But the first part says that if g of x is a function defined as the integral from a to x of f of t dt, then the derivative of g of x is given by f of x. So, let's get a visualization before we proceed with the proof. Now, uh, what does this mean? Where you have a to x of f of t dt. Well, that means that if you have a graph, and you draw the graph of f of t, so let's just draw the graph of f of t, uh, looks like that, then from a, which is just some number a, and we're going to go all the way to x, so x is variable, x could be here, could be here, it's changing, but the point is, uh, the, this integral gives the area from here to here, and this is the t-axis in this case, because uh, it's in terms of t. Or if x is here, it gives all of this area. So that's what it means. And it's saying that the derivative of the function, so it means that the rate of change of the area is given by f of x. So let's go ahead and attempt to prove it. So the first thing we're going to do in our proof is we're going to start how we always do. So we're going to take g of x plus h minus g of x, because that's how a limit begins. Um, so if we have g of x plus h, remember that g of x is defined as a to x of f of t dt. Okay, so g of x plus h, that means you plug x plus h into here. So that means we get the integral of a to x plus h f of t dt minus, and we're going to put g of x, so it's going to put this a to x f of t dt. Now, using a law of integrals, we're going to break up this integral from a to x and from x to x plus h. So we're going to do that at this point. So we're going to get rid of that integral, and we're going to replace it with a to x of f of t dt, and it's going to be plus integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt, and again, we have to have that minus integral from a to x of f of t dt. Okay, so that's a valid move, because this is a to x, and this is x to x plus h, so together they're a to x plus h. But now you see this and this are the same, so we can just get rid of them. And we get that the total equation is just x to x plus h of f of t dt. And that is equal to g of x plus h minus g of x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to divide that result by h. So we're going to put a 1 over h in, we're going to put a 1 over h in front of it. So now what we need to do is we need to define a couple things. So what we're going to define, we're going to define points u and v. So that on the graph, let's put the little graph right here. On the graph of f of t, let's say it looks like this. Um, this is the point u will be where the maximum is. So on this closed range, okay, so on this closed range. On this closed range, let's go from x to x plus h. So it's a very magnified range. We have a, max, a maximum and a minimum. And there's always going to be a max and a min, which is like the relative max and min on that range. So this max, we're going to label the x-coordinate u and the min we're going to look at x coordinates v. So this is f of u, and this is f of v. Now, something to note, the area under this whole curve is bounded between two smaller areas. Let's take the smallest coordinate here and make a rectangle out of it. Then this area right here is smaller than the total area. But if we take the biggest x coordinate and make a rectangle out of it on the same range, then we're going to get a bigger area. And algebraically, what this means is that if we have this area here, uh, then we uh, this is going to be less. So let's not put the 1 over h for now. This is going to be less than if we have f of, the, I think the u was the max, so u times h, and this is less than f of v times h. And it's times h, because on the graph, remember that this, this this is x plus h, and this is x. So the distance between them is h, so we're just doing the area of a rectangle. Okay, and then now we're going to put the 1 over h, so this h goes away, and this h goes away. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as x, as up h approaches 0. So on the graph, what we're doing is that we're going this point is getting closer here because x plus h is going closer to x. And now note that that means that the points u and v, which were originally, you know, let's say they were here and here, 
when this is going closer to x, the points u and v are also going closer to x. So that means that f of u and f of v are going closer to f of x. So the limit as h approaches 0 of f of u is equal to f of x, and the limit as h approaches 0 of f of v is f of x. And now using the sandwich theorem, we have something that this value is less than and something that is greater than, and both of them are going to f of x, so this must also be f of x. So the limit as this approaches 0 also equals f of x. So now let's clean this up a little bit and look at the implications. So we found, we found that the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h times integral from a to x of f of t dt, this is x plus h, by the way, um, is equal to f of x. Now, remember this, this was defined as limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h times g of x plus h minus g of x. Remember, that's how we defined this in the beginning, or that's what we found it was. And that means if we write this like this, this is just g prime of x. So we've shown that g prime of x equals f of x. So writing the last result, we get that g prime x equals f of x. And that's basically how you do that. In the next video, we'll look at part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus.